Are we really supposed to believe that after disabling all the privacy settings within Windows that it actually stops Microsoft from tracking and spying on our Windows computer? Mm, yeah, no. So I'm gonna show you two methods that you should use that will stop your computer from leaking data. Method number one has been around forever and it's an absolute favorite tool that many of us use and it's free. And of course I'm talking about the famous oh and oh shut up 10 plus plus and yes it does work on Windows 10 and Windows 11. The nice thing is that this tool requires no actual installation. You just download it and run it as a utility. Now, whenever we download anything from the internet, we wanna make sure it's the official website. I will have a link to that below. I also like to run it through something called Virus Total to make sure it's a legitimate version with no issue and nothing funny hiding inside. Now that I know it's clean, let's go through it. And this is what it looks like. The interface is pretty straightforward. Top side, you're gonna see something called current user, which is the user that's logged in, or local machine, which is basically the settings for this entire computer. So let's go to the current user, and I get a whole bunch of options. And then if you don't know what anything is, simply click on it, and a little pop-up window opens and explains what that option is. And the best thing is that you can make it based on your own personal preference. What I would like disabled, you may want to have enabled. So it's really down to you. Now, on the right-hand side, it's got a little recommended where they suggest whether you should enable or disable it. And if you're gonna make any changes, the first time you do this, it's gonna say, look, let's make a restore point just in case something goes horribly wrong. Now, there's a lot of stuff here, and the more you go down this, you'll see just how much this tool actually exposes and just how much more control you actually have on the stuff that's running on your computer. All right, let's go actually make a change just so I can show you what that looks like. So under the taskbar, let's just say I wanna disable the search box in my taskbar. So I'm gonna switch that on. Oh, it's also worth mentioning, you can go into file, you can export the settings and you can go to the actions and you can say automatically apply only the recommended or you can say recommended and somewhat recommended settings or apply all settings and you have the option to undo everything you've just done. So this is nice and safe. All right, so now we close down this little utility and it says, look, heads up, that may be an our Windows update that invalidates everything that you've just done. So just a heads up, you may need to run this again and again after every update. And some of the settings that we've chose to do will actually require a restart of Windows. So let's go ahead and do that quickly, just so we can see what that looks like. And now logging back into the machine and you can see my search is actually gone in my taskbar, completely disappeared. Now let's see, we wanna bring it all back. So let's go back into our little utility. All we have to do is double click on it and it will simply pop that utility open. Now under actions, I simply go to the option that says undo all changes. And it says, yep, it's gonna undo them. Do you wanna make another restore point? I'm not gonna do that at this stage. And now all settings have been reset. So a quick reboot later, let's log in. Remember we got rid of the search in the taskbar and voila, it is now back. Okay, so now that we spend some time going through the various settings and enabling and disabling what is good for you, let me show you another method to make sure that no data is leaking from your computer. And the best way to do that is to stop the DNS to Microsoft. What does that mean? Well, we know whenever we go to any website like google.com, the computer has no idea where that is. So it needs to look up the IP address of google.com. And it does this by using a system called DNS. DNS is like the phone book of the internet. You looks up google.com, it comes back and says, here's the IP address, and then off your browser goes to google.com. So why is this even remotely interesting and what has that got to do with Microsoft and our data? Well, what happens if we can control the IP address? In other words, what happens if we tell our computer, look computer, whenever you're trying to send something to Microsoft systems, don't bother looking it up in the DNS, you're gonna use the IP address that I give you. And we're certainly not gonna give the right IP address, which means that our computer cannot reach Microsoft systems, and if it cannot reach their systems, it cannot send them our data. And this is super exciting because we get control. And it sounds complicated, but it really isn't. Let me show you how to do this. 
Okay, let's fire up your file explorer, click on your local C, you'll see Windows folder. We wanna double click on that. Then we wanna scroll down until we see system 32, double click on that. And we're gonna scroll down and we're gonna see something called drivers. We wanna double click on that. And then at the top, you're gonna have etc. etc. We wanna double click on that. And this is where we're gonna be playing. So we were interested in the file called hosts. Well, before we do anything, I'm gonna right click on hosts. I'm gonna go down to copy. I'm then gonna right click anywhere and press on paste because we wanna make sure that we have a backup. Before we do anything, backups are important. Now, I like to right click on the file. I like to rename it. So I have host dash backup. So now I know exactly what that is. Okay, now that we've got that out the way, let's see what it actually looks like. So we're gonna right click on the host file. We're going to click on open with, and we're gonna choose notepad and click okay. And this is the text file that you'll see. This is how this file works. So we have a website and the website is that domain. And now we're saying, go and look it up on the internet. Here is the IP address I want to go to whenever we look up that website. Here is a different website. Don't look it up either on the internet. Rather use this IP address that I have. Don't bother with the DNS. Use what I am telling you. Okay, now that we got the file open, I'm gonna tell my computer not to look up the correct IP address for my website, thetechyguide.com, but instead use a different address so you can see what happens. We're gonna take the host file and we're gonna drag it onto the desktop and it's gonna say, hey, we need permission to move it. Yes, that's fine, move the darn file. Now that the file is actually on our desktop, same thing, click on it, click on notepad, open it up. I'm gonna put it 0, .0, .0, .0. And then I'm gonna say, well, what's the website address that needs to go to this IP address? Well, let's put him in my domain, the techieguy.com. So now remember what we're saying is, whenever somebody looks up the techieguy.com on this computer, forget the DNS, just go to this IP address. Okay, now that that is in, let's go and save this file. Now we're gonna click on file, we're gonna click on save. Now that it's saved, we simply drag it straight back in to the right location and click on continue. And just to double check, let's open up notepad and there it is, saved in the right location with the techieguy.com and that IP address in the right folder. So what does this mean? Well. Let's open up a web browser, go to thetechieguy.com and press enter and look at that. The site cannot be reached. We have successfully taken over the IP address and sent it to nowhere. And just to show you that everything else indeed still works, there's google.com, there is youtube.com, so everything else still works. So now that you've seen how to block it for one domain, our next step in our master plan is to block all of Microsoft stuff and successfully take over those IP addresses so it nothing leaves our computer. Let me show you how to do that next. The computer has no idea what 0.0.0, .0, .0 is, so it stops dead. Okay, so now what we're gonna do is not block my website, thank you very much, but what you're gonna do is block all of the various Microsoft telemetry and other nonsense stuff so it doesn't get to Microsoft. And in order to do that, you need to know all the domains that Microsoft uses. But don't worry, I have an entire list for you. Right, same as before, we're gonna take the host file, we're gonna drag it out of that particular folder that's protected onto our desktop. And now we're gonna open up that file, right click on it, open with notepad, or just double click and open with notepad. There is the techie guy stuff, let's remove that. And now let's go grab a list of all the services that Microsoft uses, all the DNS entry that Microsoft uses from our system. We're gonna find all their host entry. And thankfully we don't have to know what they are because someone has done all the hard work for us. The link for this particular thing will be in the description of this video. And here we go, we have a full list, the things that blocks Microsoft or Office native broadband tracker that tracks your activity. And you can see that this was last modified on the 17th of May, 2024. So this does actually get updated pretty regularly. And look at those telemetry entries for Office, for Windows, for Live.net. All of the stuff is sending data from your computer elsewhere. We're gonna select that entire list and we're going to right click on that list and we're gonna click on copy. 
Now, what we want to do is open up the host file and simply paste it. And now we've got this massive host file. So click on file and click on save. Before we head out, let's go find a random domain in here. I'm going to just copy that. We're going to test it in our browser. Now that it's saved, we're going to drag it straight back into the same folder that we have been doing all along. And now let's fire up a web browser, make sure everything else works. So there's the techie guy works again. There is yahoo.com. There is google.com. So there, everything else works. Let's paste in that domain that I took out of that host file and it is now blocked. So my computer could be trying to send the data, but it's not going anywhere. Let's go find another random domain that's in here. Let's copy that js.monitor.azure.com, paste it in there and again, also blocked. And just like that, using this method, we have stopped all those services from getting our data because their IP address is simply not going anywhere. But what happens if you change your mind and you want to undo all of this? Don't worry, super simple as well. If for whatever reason you want to undo everything we've just done, you can either open up the host file and go remove all those entries, or you can simply delete the host file because we made a copy of it. Now simply right click on the host dash backup, rename it, get rid of everything except for the word host and you're back to normal. Now at this stage, so many people are sick and tired of having to constantly find all these workarounds Microsoft. So check out this video right over here about switching to Linux from Windows. And before you roll your eyes, watch this video first and you'll be pleasantly surprised. But before you head out, Make sure you give the video a quick thumbs up and I'll see you in that video. Let's go.